till Saturday or Sunday. The latest shedding, which has changed now from stage two to four, has now also been blamed in somewhat to the cyclone that hit Mozambique at the weekend. For more on SA's energy crisis and South Africa's confidence in the energy sector to be able to restore itself, we are now joined by mining and energy advisor, Mr. Ted Blom. Very good evening to you, Zoe. Thank you very much for your time. Essentially, government has met over the course of the year, maybe three or four times already. Um, they've come out blatantly saying that they are aggressively working towards it, yet we see no end. Absolutely. And they've also appointed the panels and panels of experts, and they have a weekly cabinet meeting now as well on ESCOM. So uh, this is a real serious co uh, cause for concern, uh, more so over the weekend, because South Africa's after-hours consumption of electricity falls quite dramatically to about 22 gigawatts. So if ESCOM is 4 gigawatts short, of the 22 gigawatts that's required after hours means that more than 50% of Eskom's capacity to generate power is offline. And that's like running your car engine on half the number of cylinders. It's not acceptable, it's actually reckless to, 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 to run an economy like that, and it's not sustainable for you and me and everybody else in this part of the world. Would you describe that we're possibly on the brink of a crisis? We also heard the uh, president in parliament about a month ago saying that they were actively uh, working on the problem, uh, they would be coming up with solutions, but we're not really seeing any solutions materialize or anything concrete actually coming through. Well, that's the problem with this government. It's been very long on talk and very short on walk. Um, they promised us a turnaround plan last year, September. They then said it was going to be uh, delivered in December. In December, they came with all sorts of other panels. Uh, the fact of the matter is that Eskom is out of con control. It's in meltdown mode. I'm forecasting that by the end of this month, Eskom will be uh, breaching its covenants, debt covenants, and it will be forced into business rescue. This government doesn't want to put it into business rescue, but that's the only rational thing to do under the circumstances. In the meantime, they're holding you and me and everybody in this economy to ransom. We're losing jobs left, right and center, and the tariffs are going through the roof. And heavens knows where all that money is going to, because it's not seemingly being used to fix Eskom. In terms of actual supplier or energy supply, are we possibly going to see a scenario in South Africa where we could be at a blackout on our grids? Uh, that's absolutely possible. Um, uh, we already got rotational blackouts or load shedding is uh, the, the, the nice acronym that Eskom has uh, given it. The fact of the matter is it's, it's, it's selected blackouts of areas and if we talk about a total meltdown, all you need is one accident by the operator. Uh, maybe going to the bathroom as it happened uh, earlier on this week with uh, Eskom's generators going down or something like that or maybe uh, a malfunction in the switch and you could have dire consequences. Yeah, speaking of uh, accidents and malfunctions, we're now also seeing uh, the knock-on effects on what's been happening at the cyclone with regards to Mozambique and how that's affecting our, su our su supply supply here. Uh, take us through that. Okay, so we get, on a normal day, we should be getting roughly uh, uh, two gigawatts from uh, the Kabora Basel scheme, the hydro scheme up in northern part of Mozambique. It's a, it's a long way away and the lines are DC. They come right through the rural parts of Mozambique, which uh, at, at times in the past have been vulnerable to terrorist activity. Uh, there is now currently, as everybody seems to be aware, a major storm brewing just off the coast of the uh, northern part of Mozambique, off, uh, off Baira. And seemingly Eskom has lost 900 megawatts uh, out, of the, out of one of the two lines that uh, normally brings power down from that part of the world. And I guess if the storm is still raging on, the other line, which brings the other half of that power, is also vulnerable and susceptible to damage. So we, we, we're in a very vulnerable situation and we shouldn't be here because we have 50% of, uh, of the generating capacity not being fixed. That's the big problem. You can't run around like that. With regards to that, what sort of contingency plans should have then been put in place for something like this to have happened? Well, the new board has been in place now for more than a year. And, and frankly, Eskom is now in a worse situation than it was when this board took over from the previous corrupt board. So as far as I can see, this board is, is and I've said it before, and I'm not the only one, the unions have now joined me in this, uh, this chorus, is this board is ineffective. They haven't got the experience. They're conflicted, which we heard from the Zonda Commission. Uh, the chairman is grossly conflicted in terms of its responsibilities at Eskom. And, 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 and uh, suddenly all that happens is the minister takes over and acts as the board whenever it suits him at public forums. The fact of the matter is the situation needs to be addressed. 
and needs to be addressed in terms of proper governance, which everybody thought was promised by the new president coming in after the Zuma administration. This president said it's a new dawn, proper governance is going to be uh, executed. In fact, all that's happened is we've seen a change in face. The poor governance, the poor inco in, uh, incompetence, uh, the poor uh, availability of plant, it all just got worse. Well, the ordinary South African, where essentially does that leave us, apart from being held at ransom? Okay, so, I mean, we've just had the new price increases, which I think are ill-founded and defective. And, in fact, Nurse had told me at the, at the hearings that this price application was defective. And, and uh, what I think is South Africans need to get together and uh, uh, bandy the High Court to uh, declare this de defective and have the price uh, increases taken away. Because we cannot be paying more for more unreliable electricity or for less electricity availability. I mean, most of the people, you don't realize it, but you're paying more than half of your ESCOM charges are for line availability or line capacity. And, and the stuff is not available. So what are we paying for? So I think people that are concerned should contact me and we can bandy together a group of people and some money and take this into the High Court. Unfortunately, under the regulations, the only way to have this set aside is through the very expensive legal process through the High Court. But uh, certainly I think I've had enough. And I think many people in the industry have had enough. And if they're angry enough, you must contact me and we'll make a plan. Essentially, we were speaking off air and you were saying you know, this could possibly be going on for the next five years or so. I've said so publicly. I think I'm the only one who's been brave enough or foolish enough to say publicly that until Eskom sorts out its coal procurement plan under long-term agreements, uh, from, from that day that they signed the first long-term agreements, it will take another five years to remedy the rolling blackouts and intermittent blackouts as we've been experiencing here. And we're experiencing these notwithstanding the categorical undertakings by government, the minister and the state president uh, that this, this rolling blackout would be ended immediately. They even cancelled people's leave and all such other foolish things. I mean, I've never heard a bunch of amateurs running a show as I've seen with Eskom. Now, uh, essentially, just as we bring it to a wrap, we've been asking our viewers today, of course, uh, with the escalation of loading in the country, um, can one still believe in the power utility's ability to uh, power or of power supply? What is your view on that? Well, I've said before, uh, I forecast this five years ago, the financial meltdown I forecast five years ago, the operational meltdown I forecast more than 10 years ago in terms of the cold steel shortages and so on. So this is no surprise to me. And uh, this is just the final leg of the meltdown. As far as uh, believing that Eskin can supply our future, no, I don't think. I think those days are over. The incompetence and the inability to, de uh, deliver, to deliver power is evident for everybody to see. We are in the middle of a weekend with the lowest demand uh, uh, in the whole uh, demand profile of electricity and Eskom can't even supply that. They're four, four gigawatts short. Uh, it's ridiculous. It makes us a banana republic. Are we seeing the final meltdown? We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you very much for joining us in studio. That was uh, Mining and Energy Advisor Ted Blom just taking us through the current situation with regards to power supply in and around South Africa being moved from stage two to currently stage four load shedding.